234-1888-575-852 or plus 234-1888-5066. The services will be broadcast live on www.healingstreams.tv and on the Healing School mobile app. The Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris. Your set time for your healing. in Denmark, in Finland, in, in Sweden, wherever you may be watching us, we want you to know this channel has brought to you not only about God, but the supernatural power working of God. So today I, I have a few things that I want to share with you and some really, really exciting information uh, that is going to transform your life. I am Martin Intele from Bronislaw International Apostolic Church. And I want to pay homage first and foremost to my friend, uh, Pastor Freddy Ntambwa and his leadership team for this uh, epic, epic, wonderful of Denmark in Aarhus, where we can come to you live and tell you about God's goodness and the supernatural working power of God. Today, we, as you may have seen some of the clips that we have shown to you, uh, we do have a special ministration coming to you live this weekend. And uh, it's our man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome. He'll be ministering live. The healing stream is coming to you live from the 18th of this month, March, to, the, to Sunday, the 20th. And there will be so much power and so much goodness and so much life-changing. I want to encourage you that you are able actually to come in and watch. And uh, here are some of the details that you can follow through. First and foremost, you can actually get the link right from this channel. And you can also be a contact person where you can invite other people, especially those who are being oppressed by the enemy. This healing stream will be so powerful that the power of God will be flowing through the channels and touching you. Now, I, 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 later on in the program, I'm going to talk about being physically present in some of the conferences we've had with our man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome during the International School of Ministry conference in Johannesburg in South Africa, where the healing school is organized and where I saw phenomenal, phenomenal miracles, phenomenal miracles. This is real, people. And uh, when we have these healing streams coming to you this weekend, the 18th, which is Friday to 20th, the same power, the same grace, the same anointing, that you are seeing on these promos is going to come to you in your living room, wherever you will be seated. And if you are afflicted, you are sick, we want to encourage you. You can do something about it. Because this time, you don't need to travel far away. It can come live to you. And as you register, we can actually, pastor will be ministering live to anyone that can contact and connect in the power of God. And so today, uh, on a continuation, uh, the privilege of my, my friends here, uh, we, I'm going to continue speaking on the supernatural power of God. And uh, I want you to know that the supernatural power of God is ours for the taking. If you are a child of God, uh, uh, your identity includes that you should move in the signs and wonders of God. This is not something for, the, for some people elsewhere. This is not something that we can only dream about. No, this is something that you can partake of. And I'm a, I'm a great, great, great a believer in that if you believe in God, then you have to believe in the supernatural aspect of who he is. So one of the, uh, the, 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 the books that we're going to promote and talk about today is the Rhapsody of Realities. Now, the Rhapsody of Realities... Is, is a devotion that our man of God has, uh, has actually been writing for many years now. It was in its 20th ed edition, I think, that's, that's last year. And it has continued. 
And in the Rhapsody of Realities, one of the topics that he touched on the 8th of March uh, is what I'm going to expand on a little bit as a form of preaching. So have your Bible ready. Call somebody. Send this link and say, hey, listen, there's something about the supernatural and there's something that you need to hear that will actually lift up and prepare your faith for what God is about to do. Why I believe in the supernatural power of God. Why I believe in the miracles. Why I believe that everyone I know should be part of the healing stream this weekend. This is why I do. Because in the Bible, we see many times, for example, in the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, Hosea comes out and he says, my people are destroyed by their lack of knowledge. Because you have re rejected knowledge, I also have rejected you as my priest. Because you have ignored God's law or testament, I will also ignore you. Now, Hosea, we know that knowledge is critical. And uh, uh, let me tell a story. There was a man, there was a man who was uh, uh, traveling from, from England to America. Uh, and back then, many years ago, traveling to such a distant land was not usually by flying. Usually, it was by going by, 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 by sailing in a big ship or somehow by sailing and using water. And this man went and uh, somehow they sponsored his ticket to go to America from England. And he took many. However, what he didn't do was to look at the contents and the details of the ticket he had. He got into the ship. He found out because it was a long trip. Everyone who was there would go to the restaurant when it was time to eat and enjoy their food. And the, he thought his ticket was not good enough to cater for the food. So he slept on, a, on an empty stomach and the little food he had suddenly ran out. So he had to go to the ticket, to the, to the restaurant and start begging in order to get a job. But the, the man, the staff who worked in the, in the restaurant tried to see the ticket. He looked at the ticket and said, yeah, listen, your ticket actually qualifies you to eat from this restaurant throughout the time you are in this ship. Throughout the time you are in this boat, you can come for breakfast, you can eat your lunch, you can eat your dinner. It has been totally fully paid for. Now, uh, uh, this man didn't know, partly because, and majorly because, let me put it that way, he had not looked into the details of his ticket. Pastor Chris Oyaklome in the, in the Rhapsody of Realities brings out that understanding Especially when Paul reads from Ephesians chapter 3. I just told you that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, let's look at what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. This is what Paul says about what he knows in the word of God. He says, to me, that is to Paul, though I am the very least of the saints, God's consecrated people, I'm reading the Amplified. This grace, the privilege to preach, was granted and graciously entrusted to me to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending, and he says this uh, wonderful words, the unending, boundless, fathomless, incalculable, inexhaustible riches of Christ. Now, if you are reading your version, maybe that's not shown. But I want you to know that Paul was simply saying that the gospel he has been brought to preach is such, so rich, that out of the gospel, there is so much that you can get it. It is boundless. It's fathomless. And Pastor Chris told in the Rhapsody of the 8th March, which I just want to expand on this evening, is that there are many people who do not actually open what God has blessed, has blessed them with. And therefore, they go through life on the earth, going through life and suffering and, and going through certain challenges and problems that they don't have to, if that challenge can come, if they knew the power, if they knew the grace, if they knew the glory that was upon them as a child of God, they would not have gone through what they have gone through. And some either are lazy not to open up what God has given us. And uh, if you look in Hebrews chapter 9, let me just say that. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 16, this is what the writer says. He says in Hebrews 9 verse 16, where, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death 
of the testator. Now, the word testament is the Greek word they are taken. And it means the, the last disposition, the last will. So, when Jesus died for us, when Jesus died for you, he actually left you a they are taken, a testament, a last disposition. That when you open it up, Paul says it's boundless. Paul says it's bottomless, the riches that are in there. And these are some of the things that when you begin to relate to them, when you begin to open them and, and, and apply them in your life, those demons that have oppressed you, those challenges you have known for so long, cannot stay at all because you realize how much God has given you. Uh, a testament is of force. After men are dead. Otherwise, there is no strength at all while the testator lives. What the writer to the Hebrews is simply saying is that, is that as long as the person who has left you the will is alive, you cannot enjoy the will or the inheritance he would leave to you. We, we, most of us know about the inheritance. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. The supernatural life is part of the testament that God has left for us. It is not something that is outside uh, the Christian. It is something that is a part of our identity. It is telling us that we can flow and walk and do what God has called us to do. So the question that I may even pose this evening is, have you opened the testament? If you are one of those that uh, are in doubt or, or you have struggled with uh, whether, you, whether God can heal you or you have thought uh, maybe you don't qualify enough, I, I, I simply ask you, go, do, for, do yourself a favor. Open the testament. Open the last disposition that God has given you because Jesus has left us everything, everything in life that we need for life and godliness has been given to us. And part of that is the healing power of God. Part of that is the progression in life. Part of that is, is the supernatural power of God. Part of that is the miraculous power of God. And if you will, and dare even watch these healing streams that is coming to us this weekend, you are going to see God at work. God healing certain sicknesses you cannot even imagine. We have seen it over the years. I, I have so many testimonies to tell, and some of them I will tell even this evening. So, uh, I want you to know today that God has something for you this weekend. In this channel, as you watch this channel, there's going to be a link. Turn on this Friday, the 18th of, of March, up to Sunday. You're going to see those links. And even those of us who are connected to me, we're going to show those links. And if you're a person that is saying, okay, I would like to be part of it. I want to organize. I want to watch the healing streams. You're welcome. And as you watch, God is coming through the healing stream. Now, I mentioned the Rhapsody of Realities, which is one of the, uh, if not the best-selling devotion ever today. I want you to know that book has so blessed me and millions across the world. So you might wonder, what is it? Maybe you've never heard of it. You're one of those, maybe in our Scandinavia, who has not seen it. Very soon now, we're going to show a short clip on the Rhapsody of Realities. And when you see it, you're going to see some of the contacts. You can click them, and you can find it on Google. And each part of it are booklets that you can buy, you can get, and some of it we can actually send to you if you contacted us. Watch this clip now. God bless you. Thank you. over the world. The Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris is here again. It is the biggest and most impactful healing service ever. The clouds are gathering and there will be an outpouring of the miraculous all over the world.
March 18th to the 20th, 2022. When we tell that devil to get out, you know, get out in the name of Jesus. And there will be restoration. You'll be healed. If you could not walk, you'll be able to get up and walk. When that moment comes, and I tell you to put your hands where you need a miracle, get ready because you must recover in the name of Jesus. Get ready to receive your own miracle. Doesn't matter what sickness, doesn't matter what infirmity, by the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, you will be healed. Give God unto you. Give God praise. You are here for your own baby. Could not walk, see, or talk for over three months. And what now happens she now? can walk, she can, she walk, can talk, she can talk, and she can see. Well, shout hallelujah! Register now to participate at www.healingstreams.tv slash three days. For more details, please call plus one eight three two seven two four nine three nine zero or plus four four two zero three. 176-9724 or plus 27-799-675-852 or plus 234-1888-5066. The services will be broadcast live on www.healingschool mobile app. The Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris. Your set time for your healing. Praise the Lord. I want to say sorry. We apologize for, for the lack of sound. I think uh, we work out something and uh, then uh, we still play the Rhapsody of Reality so you can easily connect and see uh, some of the things that God has been doing through the spread, through the promotion of the Rhapsody of Reality. I was talking about the fact that God has left us uh, a will and in this will, uh, he has left us all the blessings that we ever need. And part of that will includes that we have a supernatural uh, blessing that we need to take advantage of. Uh, if you look into the will itself, humanly speaking, up to today, uh, you will want to know what has been left for you. Uh, I do know that many people open the word of God and many people read the Bible. If you will see the power of God, Again, I, 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 knew, I do know it takes more than just looking at the word of God as information. It requires you not only to take it as information, but to apply it. And I'm going to give three things at the closing as to what you can do in order to see the supernatural power of God working in your life. In, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and uh, uh, reading from verse 4 to 5, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5 there. Paul says something critical. He says something really good. He says, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul says that the... the the message of the gospel it is not just uh, good and, uh, and enticing words. It's not just God loves you. It is more than that. Because in the gospel is the power of God for the salvation gospel too. Is the power of God for the, for the, for the freedom of mankind. For the, for the release 
of people from bondages and from, from many other things that can oppress you. When you watch the healing stream uh, this weekend, one of the things that you will notice and uh, testify is how the power of God working mightily through our man of God come through and heals the sick in a very tremendous, miraculous way. That is the gospel. That is the testament that is part of us. Uh, and that's why we, we cannot stay the same when this power is at work, when we allow ourselves to walk in it. Paul was saying that I came to in the demonstration of the spirit and power so that the, you do not just have your faith on good words, on, on intellectual power of, of humankind, but also on what God can do uh, as he touches you. Uh, I was reading how Paul moved from city to city, uh, from many, many, like Ephesus, and, and at one time he was in Athens. And if you look at his time in Athens in, in Acts chapter 17, which you can look up uh, later, one of the things that you find as he spent time there is he went into an intellectual argumentation with the, with the Athens. The Greek philosophers were good at this. And he challenged them about knowing this unknown God. And that was awesome. And that, that was awesome. But later on, as he comes to Corinth, he writes this word. And, and I want to believe that one of the reasons he could have written this is because, you see, in, if you look at history, part, one of the places where we didn't see the huge demonstration of the power of God was in Athens. If you come to Ephesus, there were miracles. If you come to other cities, Paul went, there were miracles, and the power of God was demonstrated. What I'm trying to tell you is we need to see the supernatural, especially in the middle of Europe. We need to see the supernatural like never before. And, and if you're one of those are watching and you are in this supernatural power of God and you believe that God is able to heal the sick, set the captive free, as we will witness this weekend, I want us to go further. Last time I was speaking, I was saying we should put a demand. We should not say, God, well, you do heal and we accept it. We should not say, God, you can do great things and what you're doing in, in other places. But we want to see this same power working in this Scandinavian nation, working in Denmark, working in Finland and Norway and Sweden and all around Europe so that in this harvest time we can see God moving and churches growing phenomenally. Now, um, I have been to, to South Africa, like I said before, where the, the International School of Ministry conference was held, and our man of God would come in and walk in the midst of the conference where the sick were lying and the, the oppressed were lying at the healing school. One of the things that moved me to come to St. Johannesburg, and not once, actually, for nine years, I have been, until what we call the pandemic came in. That's when we, we haven't been there in the last two years. But one of what moved me was I saw this on, on YouTube. I could see this on the Internet. But I wanted to see it firsthand for myself. Because I really, really believe that God has called us into the supernatural life. And I was a few meters away. Many times I would sit a few meters away from the very sick people that I would be seeing. And as our man of God would walk into the, the conference hall, my God, the power, the grace, and the glory of God, I believe the angelic host that would accompany him was so powerful. The palpable presence of God was so good that you couldn't help but rejoice in the Lord and cry as we saw hundreds of people being delivered and healed and set free and running and jumping. People you had seen only a few minutes away, only a few minutes away, only half an hour, hopelessly lying. They were jumping and running. They had been set free. They had been set free. The healing stream is coming right. And this time, you may not see the, or anywhere else right with your, your appliance, whatever you may be using. As you connect to the healing streams this weekend, you can experience the same power. 
you can see for yourself the goodness of God. There is nothing that you can you can say this can be manipulation. This this is fake. No, you you can be in Norway, you can be in Denmark, you can be you can be in Sweden, you can be in also all over of Copenhagen on your TV as you watch the man of God coming through to you, and you connect and you believe, you will see God moving mightily. We're gonna show you one of the clip, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, I, I I saw many. But we're going to show you one of the clips of the healing school and how God moved mightily and caused these tre tremendous things to happen in the auditorium that day. And we're going to show you one of them. I want you to see. Actually, one of them, I was right there as our man of God walked in and God was doing great things. Here we go. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. That's awesome. And like I was saying, I have been privileged to be in this conference hall where these wonderful miracles were happening. And I was a few meters away many times to see firsthand these things. It made me cry. Uh, and if you ask my wife, I'm not a man who cries easily. <laughs> it made me weep. It made me realize God was able to do these things. And God is able to do these things even without being physically present. The healing streams are coming to you live, live. It will not be something recorded live. And if you connect, 
and details are being given. And if you connect, you are able to experience the same power of God. I'm going to just take a break now. And uh, when I come back, I'll be closing on how we can walk in the supernatural power of God. I'm going to invite uh, one of my young men, a blessed young man, uh, Patrice. He's going to come up here and uh, minister to us. God bless you as we continue to watch the Scandinavian Cross Network channel all the way in all who's in the middle of Denmark. Shalom. Tari manu for half in number of full tayari. In mana singa si bayari. In this is just so cari. In reading be an agitari. In fashion muri safari. That to me me wen yes in this chuse. Oh yes.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome back. Thank you for that uh, beautiful uh, Pima song. We thank God. Um, now, I, I want us to remember this, that the supernatural life is ours for the taking. Healing is a bread for the children of God. Um, in, in the book of Col uh, Colossians, Paul writes something that I want us to look at. Colossians uh, chapter Colossians chapter Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. He says, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us partakers, to be meet partakers of the inheritance of the saints. Let me quote it again correctly, because this is important. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, which means we have, he has qualified us to partake of the inheritance of the saints in the light. We, we, we qualify by Christ's qualification. As he is, so are we. And he has lifted us up and brought us into the light. So whenever you talk about the supernatural, which is really strange that some people would even consider arguing about, we are talking about what we have as children of God. Three things that I want to conclude with. How do you grab the supernatural? Number one, it's through the word. Our man of God has been one of the greatest teachers of the word of God. And, and that's what has caused me to follow him because his teaching is so Bible-based and his expounding and revelation from the word has been phenomenal. I have yet to meet people who can teach the word and break it down and bring it out as much. And so, he, he says in the Rhapsody of Realities that uh, of the 8th of March, in which he tells us that we have the testament, he says, when you read the word of God, meditate on it. Now, I know uh, we, we, lead, we, lead, we, we tend to lead what's known as very busy lives, but there is no shortcut. <laughs> I wish there was. There is no shortcut to connecting to the supernatural until somebody can invest in the word of God, in terms of meditation, in terms of reading the word, not just as good news, not just as information, but meditating on it, spending time in it. Here's what Paul says in, chapter, in Acts chapter 20, verse 2. As he was leaving the church at Ephesus, he says something profound. He says, and now, brethren, I leave you to God and to the word of his grace, which may build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Our inheritance is connected to the word. Paul would have left this church uh, knowing that as he went to Rome, there was no possibility of return or ever seeing them. And he would have given and left them something maybe differently. Say, But Paul told them, get into the word. I leave you to the word of his grace, and the word of his grace will build you up, and it will give you access to the inheritance that you do have in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So as you study and meditate on the word, you will not only discover your inheritance in Christ, you also begin to relate and to enjoy what God has made available for you in him. Uh, one of the wonderful stories in the word of God is, is the story of David. Uh, and I'll come to that in a moment. But in Europe, uh, which I may not exhaustively share here right now, but if you remember the story of Martin Luther in Germany, the revival and the reformation we so famously talk about was as a result of him exhorting the word of God and saying, the word of God is genuine, the word of God is true, the Bible is the central religious authority, and that you must may reach salvation only by faith and not by their works. That brought out the revival. That brought out the reformation. Today, we have a lot of good things. We have intellectualism. We have, we have wonderful wisdom, human wisdom. And some of that is helpful. But until we get back into the word, until we get back into the word, the supernatural is still an illusion for many. Thank God for those that God has raised for us, like our man of God, Pastor Chris, whom you can see that the word of God is working mightily. The same. 
can work for you. Number two, I also want to say that we should speak more the word than we speak of the world view. Now, this is easier said than done, especially today. We are talking of being in after the, pan the pandemic. Now, we do have a, a, a war situation. And a lot of talk and information and news is centered on everything else but what God is and what God can do. I want you to know, let not this other information overwhelm what God has said about you. Because as you confess, you are bringing about the possession of what you are concerning about. You are, you, are, you are confessing about. Our speech must go after the word of God more than anything else. There will be rumors of war and there will be wars. But what does we say? Job 22 and verse 29. He says, when men say there is a casting down, we shall rise up and say there is a lifting up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that's the second one. I want to share a, a story from the word of God, which most of us are familiar with. It's the, it's the story of David and the story of Goliath. When David went to give his brothers something for them to eat, he found out that there was this big giant man who would curse Israel and say a lot of uh, uh, bad things and, and cause them to fear. And as David heard this, David began to ask, is there no one who can confront this person? Is there no one who can do something about it? And uh, the soldiers of Saul, the children of Israel and soldiers of Saul, were so afraid. Each time Goliath stood up, they would scamper or they would just go down. And David was talking. So the king heard and invited him and said, if you can do something about it, something can be done for you. Now, when we hear the story of David and Goliath, most of us, do not realize that the secret of David was not that he attended a fitness center or was part of uh, a gym or, or he had exercised the Lord as a shepherd boy. We do know that it was not. If you read verse 26 of First Samuel chapter 17, David said something critical. He said, you uncircumcised Philistine. What David was saying and what David knew was what contract or what covenant God had with his, the children of Israel. He knew very well that the children of Israel had a covenant through Abraham with Jehovah God. And in that covenant, every male child of Israel was to be circumcised. And that covenant, as long as it held, meant that if you were circumcised, the God who had done and brought that covenant was going to back you up. So when David boldly confronted Goliath, he was speaking from the authority of knowing what God had given him. Now, I'll say that again. He was speaking from knowing that he was a covenant-keeping child. Abraham had done that for him. And therefore, every child of God, every Israelite, was backed by God. He was bold enough to say to Goliath, you can't do that. I know I'll take you down. When we know what God has done in our lives, and we speak it, and we are bold about it, the supernatural life is ours. We are not backing down. And that's why I, I'm, I'm so excited to see what looks like a David. When you look at the, the Scandinavian uh, crust uh, network, a channel, you think, oh, oh, it's, it's such a, a small thing. It's not. We are taking on, seeing the gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing who is behind us. Nations, and I prophesy, nations shall connect to this. And the supernatural power of God shall be brought life to many homes and to many persons. Because if you go around, not many want to bring it out. Uh, not many, I don't know of many channels that are doing that, but we will see it happening. And I'm so blessed that we have it in the midst. This Friday and Saturday and Sunday, 18th to 20th, the healing streams are coming live. And the power of God is being displayed and shown. To whosoever can connect, you will see what God can do. Live and let your faith be lifted up. Because our God regardless of the size of 
whatever people have called you to be. When God is backing you up, when God is the God of the testament that he has written, God will show up when it matters most. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, I, I want to close this before we come to our last segment of the promo. That the third part of what we should do is acting according to the word. Acting according to the word. Mark says, uh, uh, if you believe, you will see. Mark 11 and verse 23. Jesus himself said that when you believe in your heart, you will see coming, it coming to, to, to pass. And this is what we are lacking most of us. Most of us will quickly believe for a short while and surrender when the challenges don't seem to be working. And that's what our, our man of God has told us already. When you lay hands, when you put your hands on what God has promised, don't back off. Don't back down. Because God will come to. The story of, of Daniel is, is an epic story of how God can come through. And again, I saw and read that as the man of God expounded in the rhapsody of realities. He said, you see, there were stages in Daniel's prayer. First, the rumor went out that, oh, everyone who is going to be praying to the God of Jerusalem is going to be, be, be excluded. That was the first part. It was just a rumor. And Daniel, being an administrator, probably heard that rumor in the corridors of the king's palace. Uh, and he went around and he probably began to pray, God, May this edict not come to pass. May this not happen to us. But the rumor didn't end there. What happened next? The king accepted the edict. The king pa passed it. Daniel reached through. He went to his home and he began to pray. And he was now probably praying, God, may they not come after me. It didn't end there. They still came after him. He still had to stand on what he believed. What was the third part of his, of his rumor, of, of this story? The third part was he was thrown in the, dan, in the den with the lion. Daniel did not succumb. He did not withdraw. He still stood on what God had begun with him. He began to pray, maybe against the edict being passed. It was passed. Uh, he began to pray that they would not come after him. They still came after him. He did not, with, even when he was in the lion's den, he still held on. He still held on. What am I saying to you? Hold on what God has given us. If we are going to see this, we, are, we will have to be people like Daniel. That's why these things were written for our learning, for our training, so that like him, we may be able to experience the supernatural deliverance of God that happened in Daniel's life. The man of God has been a general in this area, Pastor Chris Oyakilom, showing and moving forward some of the things he has stated you, you'd wonder, is this really going to come to pass? Yes, many things. And he has shown us he does not back down. He will not back up. He will not come down. He will not, he will not lower what he believes God has done and God has said. And that's what it calls for when it comes to the supernatural life of God. Hallelujah. We're going to see glorious, glorious, wonderful things happening. And so, please keep this link. Tune in. This weekend, as we watch God at work, there will be miracles. I've never, never seen so many miracles. I just thought I saw many things happening last year. But I do believe that we are going to another level with what God will be doing this weekend. So we're going to come now. And uh, we're going to come with our promo on the healing streams just before Patrice comes up and, and uh, ministers in his last song. We're going to show you Take note, this is for you. God wants to bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Come on. Stream. It's healing stream. God's spirit is pouring out blessings all over the world. Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris is here again. It is the biggest and most impactful healing service ever. The clouds are gathering and there will be an outpouring of the miraculous all over the world from March 18th to the 20th, 2022. Well, we tell
2-7-799-6725 or plus 2-7-799-675-852 or plus 234-1888-5066. The services will be broadcast live on www.healingstreams.tv and on the Healing School mobile app. The Healing Streams Live Healing Services with Pastor Chris. Your set time for your healing. Show me your love. 